so now in the last class we were doing this idea that uh, if i if i take e of x given y equal to y and i average it out then i get uh, essentially that expectation of x so so let me just formally write that down as a theorem so that we understand it properly so uh, let me do the next page um, so your theorem Uh, is 4.4.6. So let uh, x and y be two discrete random variables. And variables. Then uh, on the same sample space S. important and what you do is uh, let's say y g is a function from the range of y uh, to the real line let's take it here. defined by let g be a function given by G of y is the conditional expectation of x given y equal to y. Then what we've shown in the previous computation is E of G of y, that is this E is over the expectation of y is going to be just E of x. So it's a very useful tool. So one, uh, this is what we showed in the previous, in this previous paper. In this previous page, that's exactly what we showed. So I take the average value of, of g of y, and all possible values of y, I will get e of x by this. Uh, so first I write down definition of g of e of g of y, then I write the conditional mean, what it means, and then I just identify the fact that if you, if you expand it out, the, the y average is out, and you just get um, e of x. So one uh, in probability they they kind of or in statistics uh, they do this. I find this a little confusing, but I will just tell you this. Uh, so what they do is this theorem. So this is what we showed in the previous class. This is what we showed. There. So the about so the the previous computation. Proves the below. Theorem. So now the uh, the uh, couple of things before I sort of wind up this whole thing. So one extension is the following. So let's say one remark. So remark. Let's say one. So one remark is the following that uh, so usually uh, you 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 think of uh, okay g of little y is e of x given y equal to right? that's just a definition of the function. So one notation people use is if you think of g of capital Y as a random variable, you, you denote it by e of x given y. Okay. So that's uh this is one thing people do a lot as g of y. If you want to denote g of y, you think of it as e of x given random y. Then what the theorem shows is that the theorem shows is if I take e of x given y equal to y. That is the same as saying if I take the random e of x given y, that is g of capital Y, I average it out, I get e of x. That's another way of thinking about the theorem. Of course, this is you must be a little careful. This e is is the conditional uh, expectation of x. Given y, right? And this e is the is is the one over y. Okay. This is a little short form of the theorem, but uh, if this confuses you, then I would just uh, allow you to do it. Very nice.
uh, there's sort of an extension uh, to the variance, but I will I will do that uh, a little later. So let me just state it here without without proof. Uh, so the claim for the variance is also true holds. So you can also do the following that uh, the variance of x uh, is this something that I will not show, but I will allow you to sort of check it out. Is essentially again going to be the expected value of variance of x given y uh, plus the variance of uh, expected value of x. So this is something that's uh, that's also doable as a claim. It's also true. Uh, so here the 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 way to understand this is that this is uh, so let's call it h of y is the variance of x given y equal to y. You compute that first. Right? Here again, you define that g of y as the expert value of x given y equal to y. Then you understand this formula as the expert value of h of capital Y plus the expert value for the variance of g of capital Y. That's how you understand the formula, but uh, this can also be shown. Uh, I will not do it in class, but maybe I'll give it an assignment. To try. This is a very, very, very powerful formula uh, in statistics, like the analysis of variance formula. That is, the variance of x is the average of the conditional variance plus variance of the conditional average. So, a very useful formula in statistics. Okay. So, now we have seen one level of dependence between x and y. So, now I want to sort of understand precisely, uh, uh, so I know how. If I give you y, I know how it affects x in terms of the conditional expression. What I want to do is, I just want to understand if I can summarize uh, uh, this how, in, in average terms, how x affects y. So that's called covariance. So I'll just uh, write that down, definition down. So here's the, uh, here's the definition. Of 4.5.1. So just as we uh, uh, understood x value of x and standard deviation for a single random variable, so covariance so sort of does it for uh, for two variables x and y. So, so this 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 sort of signifies the variation among x and y together at the same time. So here is it. Let's say x and y be two discrete random variables. Sorry, two discrete random variables. Variable on the same sample space as on a sample space as. Is s. Then the covariance of x and y is defined as so here's the covariance of x comma y. That's just so. What I do is, if I just the if I just the variance, I would do e of x minus e of x the whole square. I would just take e of x, x minus e of x times y minus e. And this expectation is the joint one. So this is the joint expectation. So the joint probability. And this is just over the over x, and this is over y. Okay, that's the 
Of course, this is uh, this is again the same way. Uh, you have discrete number variables, so this, this sum can be finite, infinite, or doesn't converge. So, what does this tell you? So, if you look at it a little bit, if you stare at the formula a little bit, what does this formula tell you? This formula tells you that so you, you look at x minus e of x and y minus e of y. So, x is if, suppose x and x is larger than e of x at the same time that y is larger than e of y, then the covariance will be larger. Right? And uh, so, in some sense, the 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 uh, or let, let me put it, I don't mean to be larger, it just may be positive or negative. So if x is larger than e of x at the same time that y is larger than e of y, then the product is going to be positive. And if x is smaller than e of x at the same time y is smaller than e of y, then also the product is going to be positive. So covariance positive means that both behave the same way. But if the reverse is true, let's say, suppose when x is smaller than e of x, y is larger than e of y, then the product will be negative. And vice versa. So it means the covariance kind of measures uh, typically uh, how x and y both behave with respect to the right. So let me just write this down. Uh, I'll write this down properly. So suppose x is bigger than e of x at the same time. y is bigger than e of y and let's say x is less than e of x at the same time x is less than y is less than e of y that means they both behave the same way with the same sample points right so this will imply that the covariance of x y is positive that means x is larger than e of x and same time y is larger than e of x. Suppose the reverse is true, that means if uh, if x is less than e of x at the time y is above e of y and vice versa, when y is less than e of y at the time uh, x is bigger than e of x. I suppose this is true in a schematic way, sample by sample point. Then this implies that, in some sense, that the covariance would be uh, negative. So it means uh, the random variables behave in some opposite fashion. So this, in this, in, in probability, uh, so this in green. So this implies that. Uh, sorry, this implies that covariance of x, y is negative. So this now this implies that, so typically in statistics, you tell them that these are positively correlated. So if the covariance is positive, you say they're positively correlated. If they're negative, you say they're negatively correlated. And this comes to the last one, if, you, if they flip-flop enough, that uh, that uh, that covariance of x y is zero. So covariance of x y is zero. You know, then you say that the random variables are not correlated. So they are uncorrelated. Say x and y are uncorrelated. And this uh, we should be a little careful. We already seen an idea before, right? This is the same as, by definition, is the same as uh, e of x, y. Uh, so let's let's just do the computation. The same as uh, e of x minus e of x times uh, y minus e of y is zero. That's by definition. And if you work it out, that's the same as e of. So multiply it out. What I get? I get e of x, y minus x times e of y minus e of x times y times y and minus e of x times plus e of x times e of y right, is equal to 0. Now if I just keep going a little bit, I use expectation is linear, 
So the first guy gives me e of x, y, right? The second guy gives me e of x times e of y because e of y is a constant. The third guy gives me e of x is a constant and then I have e of y. And the last guy is both a constant, so I get e of x times e of y is equal to zero. And that gives me the fact that if I cancel off uh, one guy with this guy and I just get, uh, uh, all I get is that that's the same as e of x, y is e of x times e of y. Okay. So random variables are, co are uncorrelated if e of x, y is equal to e of x times e of y. We have seen this expression before. If you think a little bit, if you just uh, we have shown before, long time back, that if x and y are independent, then this implies that e of x y is is equal to e of x times e. Of y. The converse is not true. So the converse is just saying that. If e of x y is equal to e of x times e of y, the random variables are uncoordinated. That's all. That's something we should keep in mind. This we had shown earlier. Okay. Thanks. So here's a, let me just summarize these ideas into one theorem so that we sort of uh, understand everything together. So uh, here's a theorem that I will I will leave as a nice to prove, but I say so here's the theorem. So the theorem is the following: that uh, let x and y let me erase it. Let x and y uh, be discrete random variables. Uh, so here in the above computation, I assume they are finite means, right? So with with finite mean. For which e of x y is finite is also finite. Then the covariance of x y is going to be equal to e of x y minus e of x times. That's what we showed last. This is what we have shown. And the next thing we showed was that uh, we can also show the following. This I leave the exercises. Uh, let's say z is another discrete random variable. Random variable. Then we have covariance of x, first thing we know is covariance of xy is, and let's say a comma b are in r. Covariance of xy is the same as covariance of yx, that's the same, that's easy to observe. And the part is that, so here a and b, I should not say, let me alpha be the number. Covariance of xy is the same alpha y plus beta z is the same as uh, alpha times the covariance of x y plus beta times the covariance of x z. This one can show easily from definition. And the idea is that this also we have sort of seen is that if x and y are independent, independent, with a finite covariance, the 
then the covariance of x comma y is zero. That also we have seen in this conversation. So let me just uh, do a split view and sort of summarize the discussion a little bit. So let me go back up, uh, one page up here. Uh, Here, uh, so what I wanted to say was that for a single random variable, you had mean and standard deviation. So that, that gave you one understand the two numbers. It gave you some understanding of where the random was centered at and how the spread was. Two random variables, you can, you can define what's called a covariance. The covariance of x comma y is the average, joint average of x minus e of x times y minus e of y. So now the what you observe is that if x is large at the same time y also is large and vice versa, then the covariance tends to be positive. If x is small in e of y, e of x and y is larger than e of x same of e of y at the same time and reverse. Then the covariance will become negative so because the plot is negative. And then we observe that we call it uncorrelated if covariance of x and y are zero. But then in this competition on the bottom side of the left hand, bottom part of the left hand side, we observe that covariance of x, y is equal to zero means that if you do the algebra properly, you get e of x, y is same as e of x times e of y. And you recall earlier we had shown that. Uh, x and y are independent if e of x, y is e of x times e of y. So once we do this whole, whole scenario, I know that uh, the following fact, that if x and y are random variables, first thing I know is that covariance of x, y is just e x, y minus e of x times e of y. That's just by definition and algebra. Then if I have another random variable z and alpha and beta real numbers, the first thing I observe is the covariance x, y is same as covariance of y, x is symmetric. That's easy to see from the definition. The other one is that uh, it's linear in the, in the coordinates. And the third is that if they're independent, then the covariance is zero. And the converse is not true. 